earlier today, uh, Senate Judiciary Committee subcommittee hearing, Lanny Brewer, head of the criminal division, testifying. Yesterday, Lanny Brewer came out and admitted, okay, so I learned about the gun walking in April of 2010, and I didn't say anything to anybody about it because I, I don't know, I just didn't think it was that big a deal. Um, that didn't really go over well, although uh, uh, Lanny Brewer certainly getting a lot of cover uh, from some of the more anti-gun members of this committee, including uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein. And we've got some clips here. We'll probably be stopping and starting so we can uh, 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 make reference and perhaps rebut some of the things that are said. But let's take a listen to what happened at this Judiciary Subcommittee hearing. On uh, It wasn't uh, entirely on Fast and Furious, but it certainly obviously uh, uh, came up earlier today. Senator Feinstein. Thank, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Brewer, in June of this year, uh, I received a letter from BATF. Um, this was in response to a letter I had asked them from Acting Director Melson, uh, stating that 29,284 <laughs> firearms were covered in Mexico in 2009 and 2010 and submitted to the ATF Tracing Center. With those weapons, 20,504, or 70 percent, were United States sourced. Um, a country of origin for the remaining firearms apparently could not be determined by ATF, meaning that the number could be much higher. Um, what, inf what, what actually is the number? Now, th this was back in June. Is that the most current number? Is it fair to assume that 70 percent of the firearms showing up in Mexico <laughs> are from the United States? Thank you, Senator, for the question and for your leadership on this issue. Uh, you have, of uh, course, can we identified. Stop just right there, just for a second. Really, for your leadership on this issue. Now, what we're seeing here, go back uh, more than a year. Go back, actually, to the early uh, months of the Obama administration, and we heard the myth of the ninety percent. Ninety percent of the guns recovered in Mexico and submitted for tracing come from the United States. And then we actually looked at the raw numbers and found that well, Mexico doesn't submit most of the guns that they actually recover. For tracing. Why? Because they know that they're not from the United States. So we kept hammering that. And ultimately, the Obama administration dropped the 90 percent figure. They, 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 they said, would it become too politicized? Would you believe 80 percent? No, we wouldn't believe 80 percent either. And then earlier this year, they came out, would you believe 70 percent? Frankly, no. But again, as you heard Sheriff Wright say in Spartanburg County, South Carolina, the criminals don't care what the laws are to begin with. Remember, this is all about pushing uh, more gun control here in the United States. The cartels don't care. I've got news for Senator Feinstein. I've got news for Lanny Brewer. It's illegal in Honduras for you to go raid a military armory and wipe it clean of any guns and weapons you might find. But the cartels are doing it. It's illegal in Mexico for police officers and members of the Mexican military to supply cartel members with guns. But they're doing it. Why? Because the cartels operate outside the boundaries of the law. They don't care what our laws are. They don't care what the laws of Mexico are. They don't care what the laws of Honduras are. This is a We're talking about multinational criminal organizations with revenues in the billions of dollars per year. Yeah, let, let's 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 pass another gun control law. That that that'll that'll be the uh, the thing that stops them. All right, let's listen to Lanny Brewer's response here. Number. Now that this was back in June, is that the most current number? Is it fair to assume that seventy percent of the firearms showing up in Mexico <laughs> are from the United States? Thank you, Senator, for the question and for your leadership on this issue. Uh, you have, of course, identified the paramount issue that we have to face as we deal with transnational organized crime from the Mexican cartels. From my understanding, 94,000 weapons have been recovered in the last five years in Mexico. Those are just the ones recovered, Senator, not the ones that are in Mexico. And of the 94,000 weapons that have been recovered in Mexico, 64,000 of those are traced to the United States. We have to do something to prevent criminals from getting those guns, Senator, and that's my understanding of the most accurate numbers. 
Well, you see, this is a deep concern about for me, and I know others disagree, but we have very lax laws when it comes to guns, and I think this to some extent influences BATF and in how they approach the problem as to whether they have political support or not. But I think these numbers are shocking. And I think when you know the number of deaths these guns have caused, used by cartels against victims, uh, it's in literally up in the tens of thousands. So the question comes, what can we do? And uh, I'd really rather concentrate on the constructive rather than other things. And so the question <laughs> wait, comes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> really? Senator, really? You'd rather focus on the constructive rather than the, the other things? It's the scandal that cannot be named. I mean, this is the Lord Voldemort of scandals here. Say it with me, Senator. Fast and furious. Can you say Bill Newell's name? Senator, can you say Brian Terry's name? I mean, I know that that's, you know, something you might not want to talk about. But can you say Brian Terry's name, Senator Feinstein? Or, or would you like to have a discussion about the need for uh, more paperwork for FFLs in this country? Maybe a, a, a renewed ban on semi-automatic firearms. I mean, I, I know you want to push the, uh, the idea of more gun control uh, in the United States. I would point out that Mexico's got a lot of gun laws that you'd probably love. Doesn't seem to be helping them a bit. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure you'd rather talk about something else. All right, let, let's let's let you know what. Well, let's listen to what the senator would rather talk about. Other things, and so the question comes: Do you believe that if um, there was some form of registration? <laughs> when you purchase these firearms, that that would make a difference? I do, Senator. Senator, we're talking today about transnational organized crime, and your leadership and the chairman's and other senators shows that information, information is the tool we need to challenge and defeat organized crime. Today, Senator, we are not even permitted to have ATF receive reports about multiple sales of long guns of any kind of semi-automatic weapon or the like. So the ATF is unable to get that. Very few hunters in the United States or sports people and law-abiding people really need to have semi-automatic weapons or long guns. So today if I go into a dealership and I want to buy 50 or 60 semi-automatic weapons, there is nothing that requires that to be in any way notified to ATF. All right, let's stop for a second. So much there. The head of the criminal division of the Department of Justice has said there's really no reason for you to own a semi-automatic firearm. Now, remember, Gallup just did a poll. It was released last week. And they asked, in what I think are, are fairly incendiary terms, do you believe Americans should be able to possess semi-automatic, quote-unquote, actually they didn't put it in quotes, assault rifles? Or do you think they should be banned? 53% of those responding said, yeah, we should be able to own them. 43% said, yeah, we, we, they, we should go ahead and ban those assault rifles. Now, I don't believe that uh, we pick and choose our constitutional rights based on what public opinion polls say. Those numbers could be reversed. I don't think it would matter. You could have 10% of the American people say uh, that we should be able to have semi-automatic firearms. And you know what? I'd still say we should. But this is a, uh, an unpopular position for the administration to take, but it, they're being consistent. I mean, this is one of the first statements that Attorney General Eric Holder made as Attorney General. Wanted to bring back the Clinton gun ban. And here you have Lanny Brewer say, yes, a national firearms registration scheme would be helpful because we need information. We need information to be able to uh, combat the uh, gun traffickers. Now, let's, th let's think about this for a second here, tactically. Let's say we were to pass a nationwide one-gun-a-month law. Heck, Senator Feinstein, I'll throw you a bone. Let's say we were to pass a nationwide one-gun-a-year law. Would that stop the cartels from trying to uh, break U.S. law and get guns across the border? No. 
because the Mexican drug cartels would simply expand the number of mules or straw purchasers that they're using. They'd use one a year. Their cost might go up a little bit, but not enough to prevent them. And you know what? Even if it did, even if it did, even if the cartel said, ah, you know what, it's just not worth the trouble anymore, they've still got Honduras. They've still got corrupt law enforcement in Mexico. They've still got corrupt military in Mexico from which they can get guns. They're already using China uh, to get uh, precursor chemicals to help make methamphetamine, and they're doing it. Mexico's drug cartel is making meth cheaper than uh, we're making it here in the United States. They've become the major supplier of methamphetamine. And, you know, China has a pretty booming black market trade in firearms. So guess where the cartels are going to go? They're going to go to China. Our rights restricted. The cartels not stopped at all. And you don't have to be a genius to see that this is what would happen. But I think they'd be okay with that. I think they'd be okay with the cartels continuing to get those guns. And I think they'd be okay with you and I having our rights restricted. In fact, I kind of think that's the, uh, the plan there. Go after our rights. And what happens to the cartels, the real impact of them? Eh, whatever. We certainly, uh, with Fast and Furious, haven't shown a great deal. This administration hasn't shown a great deal of interest in what the cartels are doing because they put thousands of guns in their hands. Sheriff Paul Babu, by the way, in Pinal County, Arizona, uh, uh, said he broke up a uh, major drug trafficking ring. $33 million a month going through Pinal County. A couple of the guns that they recovered actually traced to Fast and Furious. Yep, found in the hands of the uh, Sinaloa cartel. So two more guns recovered. I think that brings the total now to about 1,398 firearms sold in Fast and Furious that are still out there on the street. And again, Senator Feinstein says, never you mind about that. We got to talk about going after your rights. We were, we were sharing with you some of the testimony of Lanny Brewer today being questioned by uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein in the uh, Senate Judiciary Subcommittee hearing. Uh, Senator Feinstein obviously not wanting to talk about Fast and Furious at all and giving Lanny Brewer and the Obama administration. Remember, Lanny Brewer is the head of the Criminal Division of Justice. He is one of Eric Holder's top deputies. He's the guy who said yesterday, I learned about the gun walking a year ago, more than a year ago, and I never told anybody. Senator Feinstein didn't have a single question to ask about that. Instead, it was all about the need for restricting your rights. Let's take, uh, let's take a listen to a little bit more here of Lanny yeah. Brewer. That kind of a notification, we lose track and can lose track of these kinds of potent weapons. And that's just one example of the kind of tool that I think would empower ATF and law enforcement to help fight this scourge. See, my, my concern, Mr. Chairman, is there's been a lot said about Fast and Furious, and perhaps mistakes were made. Um, but I perhaps. think this hunt for blame doesn't really speak about the problem. And the problem is anybody can walk in and buy anything, 50 caliber weapons, sniper weapons, buy them in large amounts, um, and send them down to Mexico. <coughs> so the question really comes, what do we do about this? I've been here 18 years. I've watched the BATF get beaten up at every turn of the road. And candidly, it's just not right. Uh, I mean, we have more guns in this country than we have people. And uh, somebody's got to come to the realization that when these guns go to the wrong places, scores of deaths result. And that's exactly the case uh, with the cartels. Um, All right, can we stop for a second? I mean, I, I'm sorry, Senator, I hate to interrupt you, but... You're all over the place. Uh, so let's, 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 let's take these uh, one thing at a time. First of all, perhaps mistakes were made in Fast and Furious. I mean, come on. Even Attorney General Eric Holder has admitted that mistakes were made in Fast and Furious. You can drop the, uh, the perhaps talk, Senator. Now, Senator Feinstein also said, we have, more, we have more guns in this country than we have people. Crime is also at a 40-year low in this country, Senator, in case you haven't noticed. More guns doesn't equal more crime. In fact, why don't you take a look at south of the border? Take a look at Mexico and Mexico's gun laws. 
You won't find more guns in Mexico than people. In fact, if uh, you're talking about the average uh, resident of Mexico, Senator, here's what you have to go through in order to become a legal gun owner. You have to apply through your, uh, 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 you have to apply to the federal government. Uh, if you are approved, and that process can take months, and you can be denied for any reason whatsoever, but if you're approved, then you get to go to the one gun store in all of Mexico. Now, if you live up uh, in northern Mexico, it's going to be quite a hike for you. You've got to go down to Mexico City. You live in southern Mexico, it's going to be quite a hike for you because you've got to go to Mexico City. There's one gun store in the entire country. You go there. And if you have been pre-approved by the federal government to uh, purchase a firearm, that's what you get to do. You get to purchase one. You can purchase a rifle, no greater than twenty-two caliber. Or you can purchase a handgun, no greater than thirty-eight caliber. Revolver. No semi-autos. How well are these gun laws working out for the people of Mexico? You have, in that country, over the past couple of months, seen a number of officials say, our gun laws are broken. Our gun laws aren't helping. Because what they're doing is they are disarming the law-abiding. And that empowers the cartels. So you've had everybody from the uh, chief of police in the state of Guerrero to uh, mayors in northern Mexico say, we've got to do something. We, we, we can't keep going on this way with our gun laws. More and more officials in Mexico say they want American-style gun laws. They want people to be able to go into a gun store and be able to purchase a firearm for personal protection or for hunting. Although primarily, I think in Mexico, personal protection is going to be a, a, a big reason why people become gun owners. Senator Feinstein says we need to be more like Mexico. Meanwhile, again, you've got people in Mexico saying, no, 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 no. We need to be more like you. All right, let's listen to a little bit more from Senator Feinstein. So you are saying today that, if I understand this, over five years in recovered weapons, there were 94,000. 64,000 of those came from the United States. That, so that's clearly, right. over two-thirds of the weapons used in Mexico by cartels are coming from the United States. That, that's correct, Senator. And just to make a point of that, in wide receiver, which was a matter where the guns were permitted to go to Mexico during the prior administration in years 2006 and 2007, when my team discovered that, we decided we had to prosecute that case because even though years and years earlier the guns had gone to Mexico, we had to hold the people who bought those guns responsible, and so we prosecuted those people, as Senator Grassley pointed out. But it is clear that we need more tools to get those people who are buying the guns and illegally transporting them to Mexico. We cannot permit the guns to go knowingly, and we cannot permit the guns to go unknowingly. We need to stop the flow. One last question. What would be the number one tool that would be of help to you? Well, I think that uh, the number one tool would be if ATF were given the ability to uh, know when guns are purchased. And frankly, as I don't know if it's the number one tool, but one of the one of the issues we're asking for in connection with the legislation we're talking about today is the ability to forfeit the weapons and the inventories of gun dealers who knowingly sell their guns to criminals. If we could know, if we could forfeit the guns of the dealers who we can prove knowingly are selling to criminals, we don't want to do anything to people who are selling to law-abiding citizens, but we have to stop these dealers from selling to criminals. Uh, yeah. The audacity of Lanny Brewer. We have to stop these dealers from selling guns to criminals. Except, of course, when they call us and say, hey, I got a guy here. He's wanting to buy a couple dozen rifles. I'm feeling really weird about it. I don't think I'm going to do it. And we actually tell that dealer, no, go ahead. Make the sale. You'll be helping us out. As a matter of fact, we'd like to send more criminals your way. Can you go ahead and stock up on more guns? Good. Gracious. Oh, and the number one thing we can do, the number one thing we can do, a national registration uh, scheme, point of sale registration scheme. That's the number one thing. we Really? Really? 
So every time I go down to a, a, a Cabela's or I go down to my local gun store and I buy a firearm, that information needs to go to ATF. They need to open up a file, make sure that Cam Edwards isn't supplying uh, cartels with guns, and that'll, that'll do it. That, that's the number one tool that we can do, or the number one tool that we can enact, a national firearms registration system. Again, Rachel Maddow, do, do you want to repeat your assertion that Wayne LaPierre was insane for saying that Fast and Furious was about trying to push additional gun control laws on the American people? Because guess what we saw today? The Obama administration say that we need additional gun control laws on the American people. 